like 90% of the coffee that's consumed is bad coffee. Yeah. I don't really love it, which is the nice way of saying I hate it. Yeah, it's like, it's bitter. Okay, bad. <laughs> so my favorite cup of coffee is from the street cart right outside of my apartment. I mean, we all have our go-to spots for a good cup of coffee, whether it's because it's cheapest, fastest or we just like the taste the best. My go-to spot for coffee is a independent place with like $4 cold brew. Probably Starbucks just because I live in New York and there's one on almost every block. Starbucks closest to the office. Starbucks. Opinions aside, it got me wondering, what makes an objectively good cup of coffee? Objectively speaking, a good cup of coffee is sourced well, roasted well, and has a, a balanced flavor. A bad cup of coffee is the opposite. It's the opposite. It's, it's opposite of everything I just said, right? The majority of people that drink coffee drink bad coffee. The percentage of people that drink good coffee is under 10%. And that's because Americans never really drank good coffee in the first place. So we are doing a taste test and there are three levels of quality which are low, medium, and high. We are basically going to smell the grounds, drink the coffee, and then compare. Let's see who can pick out the good coffee and who's been conditioned to like bad coffee. Wow, that's like someone put a piece of charcoal in water and said, here, there you go. So this one just tastes like, yeah, acrid and bitter and burnt. It's very watery. Uh, it doesn't go down smooth, it's sort of a sharp taste. I don't want to finish drinking this small amount, let alone a whole cup that's not like drowned out with milk and sugar. <laughs> I can't. That tastes worse and worse and worse. Did I like that at one point? Ultimately, while most people think coffee is subjective, it is not. It either is or it isn't. Like restaurants in New York City have a set grading system, coffee has its own grading system as well. All coffee is graded by certified Q graders, who are certified by the Coffee Quality Institute. They had to take the equivalent of the bar exam for coffee and analyze coffee through a process called cupping. It is based on uh, a number of components. So those components are all graded, and if a coffee scores an 80 or above, it is considered a specialty grade coffee. There's a line that, that happens at specialty, and anything that falls below it, it's so bad, right? It's just, it's, it tastes so bad. The majority of franchises serve below specialty grade coffee. Yeah, that one's a lot better. It's a lot less acidic. It does not taste like what I'd imagine like garbage juice to taste like. Hmm. This one tastes a little more watered down, I think. I hate it less. The aftertaste is kind of nice. It's definitely way better than that was. This is, this is okay. For right now, people are drinking terrible coffee and they have absolutely no idea how bad it is. And it has a lot to do with marketing. 100% Arabica beans sounds like it's promising a really good cup of coffee, when really it's just promising not to be the absolute worst. The, the language that people use have words, right? Like bold and, and dark. Well, who's using that? Who's using those words? It's not us. We're not using those words. We become so accustomed to this language that we don't know anything else. Until the Boston Tea Party in 1773, America was a tea country. But during the American Revolution, a large number of Americans switched to coffee because tea had become unpatriotic. Fast forward to the 1900s when it really started to become popular. Instant coffee started making the rounds during World War I. American soldiers were drinking the coffee daily to increase mental awareness and mobility during battle, and they needed something to make quickly in the field. This instant fix became addicting, and when soldiers went home, they wanted something familiar and tasty. But as we all know, instant coffee isn't exactly high quality coffee. Honey, your coffee just doesn't taste any good. If I tell you that, that this, is, this is a delicious cup of coffee and you taste it, you don't know any better that it's a delicious cup of coffee, you're gonna go, oh, interesting. 
but then you have a feeling to it, right? And so it, we, we become accustomed to like become accustomed to the to the warmth of it, to the the caffeine high that we get from it. And we can become conditioned to that. So this wave of instant coffee that entered the homes of millions across America was known as the first wave of coffee. The second wave of coffee came with the creation of Starbucks coffee in 1971. They introduced fresh roasted coffee beans to the mass public and started to change the public's expectations when it came to coffee. According to today's standards, Starbucks doesn't have the absolute best cup of coffee. But at the time, this was the best coffee that was accessible to the mass public. Starbucks cemented America's coffee drinking culture and paved the way for the modern specialty coffee industry to exist today. Which leads us to the third wave of coffee shops that are happening today. Smaller, independently owned specialty coffee shops are on the rise. From harvesting and roasting to the cup that's handed to you at the counter, these shops and roasters are paying special attention to the product that's being delivered. This one tastes kind of like a um, little bit of the acrid one, a little bit of the balanced one, so maybe it's the Goldilocks one, I don't know. Is this the same one as the first one? No. This one tastes the most like water, which means I like it the most. I think this one tastes the best. Does that mean this is the right one? Am I right? Am I? Oh, I am right. All right, that's awesome. <laughs> Lowest, middle, highest. Second best, worst. Best, medium, worst. Oh, I drank it all. One, two, three, liking this one the most. Wow, so I liked the best coffee. What a sophisticated palate I have, because all I drink is water. This one's the best, this one's the second best, this one's the worst. When people drink a cup of coffee, they're not thinking, wow, the aroma, like they're not focusing on those components of the coffee. They're focusing on whether or not they can actually drink the cup of coffee. And so what they do is they add milk and they add tons of sugar and they add all these other things to make it taste like what they believe coffee is supposed to taste like. From the wars to Starbucks, we've been conditioned to believe that the vast majority of coffee is good, but it's objectively not. For me, I'm okay with that because streetcar coffee hits the spot. But for others, it might not be the case. I, uh, I hate coffee. I think it's really bitter. I hate the way it smells. It's brown, which is not appealing. I don't know. I don't really care for caffeine or coffee or anything about this. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And ring the bell below, that way you're notified whenever we post a new video.